Hey tires, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today I thought I'd share with you one of my saltwater patterns. This is something that I call Charlie's Got Worms. And this is a combination of the popular Crazy Charlie saltwater fly and the freshwater squirmy wormy. So as you can see, we've got a tentacle sticking out the back of uh, Charlie here. This is his worm. And basically what I've done is I've taken a sea anemone tentacle from a an aquarium decoration and I've used that for the tentacle. I like these a little bit better than the squirmy wormy material because it's got a nice taper to it. I'll put a link in the description where you can find some of these. So without any further ado, let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. So for this saltwater pattern, I'm going to be using a Mustad saltwater hook. And this one is the S71 SMP-DT. And this is a size 4. It's one of my favorite uh, saltwater hooks. It's got a little bit extra length. And it's a really strong hook. So I'm going to be using Unithread in a 6 aught for this one and this is a pink I like the uni pink it's a little bit softer than some of the other uh, really fluorescent pink so it gives the fly a little bit of more of a natural look I feel so we just tie our thread on and we're gonna take our thread all the way into the bend of the fly this will kind of help us keep that warm portion uh, righted because it does get a bit of a kink in it when you apply the thread pressure to it. All right, so I've taken my thread up to about the one third or the one quarter mark, and we're gonna tie in a pair of silver bead chain eyes. If you wanna use something a little heavier, you can swap that out for either brass or lead, but uh, bead chains works fairly well for this. And we're just gonna start by figurating those eyes. Wanna make sure that they're level on the hook before we really crank that down so it's good if you look right from the front just to make sure that those eyes are sitting properly on the hook shank so every couple wraps I'll pause and I'll pull the thread tight oops and sometimes that'll happen you'll break your thread so one of the things with these bead chain eyes you might get a small sharp piece sticking out where you've uh, clipped them but that's fine, we'll just uh, re-thread our bobbin and we'll start up again. Trim off those tips. All right, so we'll continue with this and we'll keep wrapping under and we'll uh, just bury those thread ends in there. And I also like to go underneath to kind of help create a bit of a platform under the eyes. And that also helps them not to twist. And a lot of figurating back and forth. You just want to get these eyes to a state where they're not going to twist easily. And now that we've done that, we're going to tie in our squirmy wormy material. So here you can see one of the anemones that I got. I really like these. They are super, super stretchy. I find they're a little bit better to work with than some of the other squirmy wormy material because it's actually really hard to cut through it even with the six or an eight dot thread so what we'll do is we'll just kind of try and grab a little corner and then we're going to pull it and as we pull it we're going to kind of pull the tentacle towards us and on the side because this will kind of twist um, depending on how it's pulled. So you just have to get a bit of a feel for it. If you've got too much tension on it, you can come back. But you want to try and get touching turns on this just so that you don't have the silicone material popping up in between your thread wraps because that can 
make it a little bit harder to wrap over that. So you just want to wrap that until it kind of sits along the same plane as the hook shank. And when you're satisfied with that, well, it's not too bad. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And then we'll wrap back up to just behind the bead. Now we're going to take about uh, eight to ten strands of pearl flashaboo and we'll tie that in along the top of the shank and we're going to tie that right down to where the body meets the tentacle and then we'll wrap our thread back up and we're just going to sit that thread in front of the bead eyes because that's where we're going to end up uh, ending our flashaboo all right, so we're just going to wrap that up the body. We just want to try and make sure that we cover that completely. If you think you might need to add a bit of durability to this, you can definitely add a coat of head cement onto here, or you can run a bead of UV resin just to keep everything in place. And so we'll go over the eyes, under the hook shank, back over, and then we'll come under again, over, back, and over top. And that way we get full coverage of flashaboo both on top and on the bottom of the hook of uh, where the bead eyes are. Just prevents any thread from showing through pretty much. So now we'll flip our hook upside down. We're gonna grab a fox tail I've got one here, it's dyed a fairly light pink, it might almost look white, but it's got a pink tinge to it. And we'll just take a small clump of that. And what I like to do is I just, first I'll just pull out any of the really small under hairs just by hand. And then what I like to do is I like to take out the longer guard hairs. So if you just grasp the very tip of the clump, all those longer, coarser hairs will get pulled out. And I like to reset those back on top and it kind of gives the wing a bit of a different look. So we'll tie that on just in front of the eyes and then we will come in with our scissors and we'll cut off the tips of the fox hair there. Now we'll just add a few wraps just to kind of clean that up a little bit. And then one last step, I like to add a touch of flash to the wing of the fly. Now you can use something like flashaboo or crystal flash, but my preference here is just to use a small, small clump of ice dub or angelina fiber. And we'll just tie that in the middle and then double it back over and uh, clean up those wraps. And I find that blends into the fox wing really beautifully. If you don't have fox and you want to use craft fur, by all means, go ahead. That's a uh, good substitute for the fox hair. I like the fox hair just the way that it sheds water and uh, has a really nice lifelike movement in when it gets wet. So I'll add a couple six turn whip finishes here. And there you go. Charlie's got worms. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and watching my fly tying video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon to get notified on the latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you enjoyed the video, take a second and hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for your support of the channel and until next time this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.